recording here. Okay, so what we're going to tie, what I'm going to tie for you guys today is uh, what's called a trude style fly. And what that means is it's a, a, style, a style fly that has a wing that goes back from the head of the fly at an upright angle. Uh, and I found these are pretty effective flies for a variety of species. Uh, I've caught tons of grayling on these things. Uh, they work both as a dry fly and as a wet fly. Now this is a standard basic, just to give you a generic. The one that I was going to demonstrate is the, <clears throat> what we call the Royal Coachman Trude style, which led me back to saying, well, what's a coachman fly? So in that email that I finally got the, the photos to go out, I'll go through the development of the coachman to start with, the Royal Coachman. So this, this guy here was the original coachman. And that's, this goes pro probably back to 100 years or more. Um, and it used uh, a little bit of silver tinsel at the back of the fly, right at the bend, peacock curl body, and these infamous uh, hen hackles for a little bit of a, a throat, and then a white duck quill wing. Now, for those who haven't tied duck quills, they're getting hard to come by, good ones. Um, and uh, they're a little e harder to tie on than a standard wing. And after that one came the lead wing coachman, which instead of a white duck quill, it uses a slate gray uh, and tied wet fling style, sort of a tent style over the body. And those ones are also the basic fly is easy except the wing. And if you get a, a wing that's got a soft feather, it's a little easier to tie than if it's got a fairly stiff butt. Then somebody decided that it needed to be gussied up. So they made the Royal Coachman, which uses instead of uh, uh, a, a little bit of uh, feather as a tail, it uses golden pheasant crest as a tail, which has these black and orange uh, markings on them. And then in the middle of the peacock body, uh, it uses uh, red floss. Now the original red floss would have been Pearsall silk, which you can't get anymore in a proper floss size. Um, this still works as a really good fly, but I think the initial version, because it used Pearsall silk, it, it kind of went quite a bit darker when it got wet. But the rest of the fly is the same as the coachman, except for the, the tail and the center body. And then somebody decided that this would make a really good dry fly. So instead of the wet fly wings, which uh, go to the back, it was tied with upright quill wings. And then a hackle goes around this way. And then along came Lee Wolf and decided that instead of tying quill wings, it would be a lot easier to use a hair wing. And this is uh, actually calf tail and that was tied vertically, and then a, a standard vertical hackle. Um, from there, it went to this style, which is the trude, which basically replaces the upright hair wing with that trude style wing. And that's the one I'm gonna tie for you today. And if we have enough time, I'll tie the final one, which is uh, this guy, which is the parachute style, where you use a calf tail as an upright wing. And instead of going around the hook with the hackle, you go horizontally with the hackle. This allows the fly to sit more uh, close to the surface film. And I, if I'm gonna tie a whole whack of them, I would prefer to tie these as, as dry flies if I'm gonna do dry flies, uh, because I like the way they sit in the water. Um, so I tied a couple more, a couple more of these guys. So there's, now the way I fished these trude ones, uh, typically is I, uh, on stream, you'd find yourself where you've got uh, a place where there's a current seam, maybe a little bit of an eddy, and you'd cast it out uh, into the current seam and let it float. 
And then when it gets kind of the end of the float, I would tug it and it would go under. And it seems I got half my hits after it went under and on the retrieve. So it works as a wet fly as well as a dry fly. It's a pretty versatile pattern. So the tying instructions are pretty straightforward. I'm going to use a standard dry fly hook. This is a uh, size 10 uh, Hannock uh, dry fly hook. I, I've used uh, the standard mustads as well. If I want a longer body, I would use the standard mustads. Uh, if I'm doing the parachute ones, I will use the, the shorter ones. So what I've got in here is this box of mine. Yes, I've got some mustad 101s, which are standard dry fly hooks for mustad. And they're just a little longer in the shank than the Hannock one. Put that, put that in the hook. This one is barbed. So I need to get my pliers and mash the barb down. Put that in the vise. Now thread for this is, is, is a fine thread. I'm using an dot black. I'll start it right behind the eye and just wrap, dress the body with thread down to just about where the point of the hook is. I need to put a tail in and this is where I'm going to tie it in and then I'm going to wrap it back a bit to get the tail in the right spot. And what I use for a tail is golden pheasant crest, golden pheasant tippet or crest. And that's what it looks like. It's got these barred tips and it's a double bar. It's an orange color. And I will just typically strip a, a set of them off the, the fibers like that, off the stem and then cut them square. I'll measure the thing so that it's, the tail's gonna be a little less than, well, about shank length, which means that that second black stripe is going to be right at the bend of the hook. And I'll do a pinch wrap to get that on. Then I'll wrap backwards to the bend of the hook so I start at the point, wrap backwards to the bend. And I will lift it up and I will do two wraps in behind the tail. And what that does is that causes the tail to go straight back rather than falling down towards the base of the hook. Because that's nice and secure on there, I'll come in and clip the waste material off. The body is peacock earl. So I have a, now if you've got really long peacock earl, it's ideal as long as it's fairly fuzzy. The stuff I've got, I've had for a long time. And it's pretty reasonable peacock earl. It's, it's good and fuzzy. And I'll pick a couple of good strands of two to three strands of peacock earl out of that package and get the long ones because this is going to be a fairly long body. It, I'm gonna use these three for the whole fly. I'm not gonna tie in any more later. So I'll get them together and I'll tie them in tip first. Now clip square at the tip. Bring my thread forward just to hair to where I tied that tail in and put the tips down and wrap the tips in right back to where the tail is tied. Pull my thread out to the side and I will wrap very loosely around the thread, two or three wraps of thread around or, or peacock around the thread. And then with my rotary vise, I will make a 
peacock body at the back here. Sometimes with this fine curl, you have to actually wrap over top a little bit to make a nice little bump of a body. And try to keep the peacock curl fuzzy. Ah, cut the hand put point there. Oh, learn it. Did not work. Let me back this up a bit. I lost one of the strands of the peacock row in the thread. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, when I get to basically where the point of the hook is, I'm going to hold the peacock row off the thread and up and tie it down. And then I'm going to wrap forward on the peacock curl uh, about an equivalent amount to where the, the, the length of the peacock curl at the back of the body is and let it sit there. I'll take my floss and this is a, uh, a four strand acetate floss, <clears throat> heavy, heavy floss or rayon it is. And I'm going to, I took a, a skein off and I got it down to two strands. Four strands, it, it's a little hard to control the thickness of the body. With two, it's pretty good. <clears throat> I'll clip the end square, get my uh, thread back up here, make a little pinch wrap over top, and wrap back to where the Peacock curl at the back, the, the fuzzy body starts. That's about right. Bring my thread forward about the same distance as the, the length of the back of the body. And then I'll wrap my floss around the hook forward to where the thread is. And then back. I want to make this reasonably thick but nice and even if I can. You see that four strand flosses actually spreads out pretty nice. And when I get a, a reasonable diameter body there, I'll come up and tie it off. In behind and then in front. And I will trim that off. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing with my pearl. I'm going to wrap it gently around the thread a couple of times. And I'm going to do the front part of the body with peacock curl, trying to keep it about the same thickness and fuzziness as the back. And I will go up until I leave a couple of eye widths behind the eye of the hook. I don't want to go all the way to the front. And I'll wrap back through it just to make it nice and fuzzy. Lift my peacock row up and tie it off. Turn it down now. The purpose of wrapping the thread around the peacock curl when you wrap it in is that it will keep the peacock curl from coming apart when a fish gets his little teeth in there. Bring my thread right so it's like two widths behind the eye. And this is where I'm gonna tie in the wing. Now for the trued style, you can use, for, for the upright wing ones, I use calf tail because it's relatively short and it's not overly hollow a fiber and I'll, I'll do that for dry flies but for these wet flies I will use a bucktail. Get a white bucktail. This, this one has got really long hair. You can get the ones that are a mixed color white and, and color that are a lot shorter that, and, and the hair is shorter. It means a little less waste material but for this one I like the crinkliness of the, of the fibers and what I'll do is I'll pick off a a batch that's sort of like gap width of, of the hook of basic fibers. So we can see 
there's a little more in gap width. And I'll cut it off close to the leather. So I got a great, great big long whacking chunk of bucktail. I will hold it by the tip over my waistband and I'll pull out all the short and fuzzy fibers at the bottom. And that's, I need a, a wing that's going to be about to the tail. And, and to get it nice and smooth, I'm going to stack it. So this is way too long to stack, to fit my stacker, hair stacker. So I'm going to cut off all that excess. So if you have a bucktail that's much shorter fibers, it works better. So I see I just trimmed off a whole whack of fibers. And that primary reason for that is it will fit my hair stacker better. It goes into my hair stacker. And then I'll whack it, stack it. Pull it out from the base. Yeah. I will have, take a few of the real stragglers out there at the end. So you have to start out with a fair batch of hair to make it right. So there's my wing. And I'll measure it for roughly the length of the fly. And there's a few strands that are gonna be a little longer. Hold it in my left hand and pinch it flat. And I'm gonna trim off just about an eighth of an inch in front of where my fingers are, square. There, there. I'll be able to see what I'm doing. There I go. Now, I'm going to build just right in front of that peacock curl thump. I'm going to build a little bit of a ramp of thread, eye width behind the eye. And I will hold this at a 45 degree angle with the tips right lined up with the eye. Do a pinch wrap over the top and around the other side and then I'll pull up when I pull it on. What that does is that cinches the material on top of the hook. Then I'll wrap up to the eye just to cinch down the wing. Wrap back to where I've tied it in and once again, I will do a couple of wraps in behind the wing to make it stand up from the body. So there's my wing. It might be a little long, but that's okay. I don't mind these being long. Um, and then the next thing is my hackle. And I've got a, like I say, a, an old Mets hackle that's... Uh, that I've had around for years. It's it's almost a furnace hackle, um, but it's it's uh, it was cheap. <laughs> I can't get those anymore, I don't think. And I picked a feather that is going to give me a, a, a hackle that's going to be a, at least the gap of the hook and maybe a little longer the gap. And I'll backstroke the tip of it and get the really thick butt section trimmed off and then I'll come in the side and uh, just trim about an eighth of an inch on either side of the stem so I got these little bits of barbules that stick out come on here we go See how the little barbule stick up? That's going to help hold that stem in place. Again, I will hold my feather at like a 45 degree angle on the near side of the hook. And I will wrap that stem in two or three wraps. Pull up the tip and wrap in front to give a little kink. And then I'll come in and Trim out the end of the stem. And cinch it down really good. Bring my thread to the front of the fly, just behind the eye. Get my hackle pliers. 
of the tip and I will go around the hook just in front of the wing. And you can see if I wind, wiggle my hackle through the existing hackle, it won't crunch it down. So I get little wobbles like that. Make sure it's, this has a tendency to twist these old ones. So I'll, I'll try and take the twist out as I wrap every once in a while. And I'll bring it just in front of the, where I've tied the hackle down and get my thread over top. Three times there. And then wrap in front a couple. Get my scissor tips in there and just give it a little snip right down near the thigh. Make a little temp with my fingers and slide those hackle fibers back so I can get at the eye. You don't have a hackle guard tape? I, I just use my fingers like that. <laughs> I don't need a hackle guard. It, it, it's easier with wet fingers. You can pull that back right out of the way and then you can get your whip finisher in there. And now they're out of the way. I just wrap right behind the eye. And if you're like some guys, you would use glue. Uh, if you do two whips, that's probably good enough. There you go. That's the food style. If you want to be really anal about it, you could probably get in there and put a bit of glue on it, but I'm not going to bother. It'll tend to glue up the, the hackle. So that's the uh, truth style fly. Put a little bit of fibers in front. <laughs> Trim out. And it got, must have got trapped on that last whip finish. There we go. The other reason for not using glue is the glue doesn't uh, gum up the eye. If you don't have glue, it's easier to get your leader through. So that's him. Now, the next one I'm going to do is the parachute one. I'm going to use the same hook because it's got a reasonably long shank. Debarb it. So it's the same drill here, except this time the, the wing is going to be vertical. I use the eight dot thread again. I will start at the front. What is this? And I'll wrap back to about the halfway point and trim that off. Now the construction order is a little different. I'll bring my thread back up to about the one third spot on the on the hook. So it's not it's a little bit forward of half and it's not it's a little more than a quarter back from the eye. This is where I'm going to put my wing in. And I'm going to use calf tail for this. I will take, as you can see, the calf tail is a lot shorter. It's wiry and it's not as, as, uh, as robust at the base. It's not as hollow at the base. Um, it just makes it a little easier to tie a, a compact uh, wing base with calf tail than it does with the other one. Again, I will get all the fuzz out of the bottom, just hold it by the tip and pull the loose fibers out. And I want a wing here that's going to be probably shank length and, uh, and longer to start with. I want to start with that length of material. And once again, I will trim the excess off the bottom. Trim it square. And that's so that it, it goes in my stacker easier. There's a couple of extra fibers that stick out. Put them in the stacker. Now this time when I take it out of the stacker, 
I'm going to reverse it so that the stacker is this way because I want to pull the hair out with my right hand. And you can see there's where I'm at. I want about shank length. So there's a couple of that stick a little too tall. I want a, a fairly tall wing. Uh, these parachute flies can stand a taller wing because the taller wing helps the fly land properly when you cast it. Well, I'll, I'll do at this point is trim it off a little bit. And then I'm going to swap hands. Because I'm going to tie it with the butts towards the back and the tips toward the front. Measure it from the shank of the hook length. Lay it down where my thread is, up over and down, and then pull up so that, that those fibers stay on top of the hook. And pull up. Once I got that in, I will make three or four wraps close to each other towards the back. At that point, I will pull the tip, tip up facing the back at an angle and cut them away parallel to the hook shank. So you end up with this little tapered butt section that I will tie down good and snug all the way down. That makes the tie-in point not too bulky. Then I would lift up the fibers and wrap like crazy in front of them. I build up a little dam in front of the fibers that make this wing stand up more or less straight. Then to do what we call post the wing, I'll come in behind it and wrap around horizontally around that batch of fibers, horizontally around. So I'm wrapping around the wing and I'm gonna wrap that right up good and high. And what this does, because calf tail is not as crushable, it makes a good solid post that I'm going to tie my hackle around later. All the way around, then around the back and finish at the back of the wing, hanging on the far side of the hook. Got some mallard fibers here I'm going to clean out. All right, now's the time to tie the tail in. And I'll come back to just where that thorax has ended with my wing post at the back. And I'll find my golden pheasant crest. I've got a bit here that actually is the tip of the, the feather. I'm gonna just pull off enough so I have a fairly robust tail. And I'll tie this in with this. This came right out of the tip of the, the feather. And I'll put that down, measure that again, body length from the thingy with the black sticking out the back. And I'll tie that whole tip in. Now you can do this by pulling fibers off the golden pheasant crest. I just happen to have a leftover tip. And again, once I get to the back, I will lift the, that up and wrap in behind a couple of times so that it, it stays up right. Come back up and make sure that body now is a, is a fairly tapered body right back from the wing to where the Pheasant tip is tied in. And at that point, I'm going to leave my thread just at the point of the hook again. And I'll go and get my peacock curl, wherever the heck I put it. Let me go and put it down somewhere. Where'd my peacock curl go? Let's make sure it didn't fall on the floor. It did so. It's gone somewhere. My little bag of peacock girl. Huh. There, it's on the floor. Once again, I'll pull out uh, probably 
two or three strands of peacock curl. We'll start with two. I think that'll work. Set the tip short. Do just like I did before. Lay them down on there. And again, I, I, I start with the tips a little further up again to try and make this body kind of a tapered, smooth body back to the tie in point. And then a couple of wraps around the thread. And I will fill that back bump on the body. A peacock curl. And I want that to be fuzzy and fairly thick. Don't want to add too much. I want this fly to float a bit. I'm going to get that rear bump about the right length and thickness. I will unwrap the hurl, bring it up, and wrap on top of it right to the point where it's a maybe a six, an eight, between an eighth and a sixteenth of an inch behind where the wing is. And leave the peacock curl there on the near side of the hook, almost right behind the wing. Bring my thread back to the front of that bump of peacock curl. And I'll get another set of four strand floss out here. This is always gets locked up in this old school. So there we go. It has a this the, the retention cut in this spool as being an old plastic one. It uh, it's pretty deep, so it's hard to re recover the stuff out from the hole. Uh, cut it off. I'm going to use two strands again. Tie them in right there and wrap back to where the bump and peacock curl is. Bring my thread forward to where I've left the other pieces of peacock curl off. And I will wrap my body of floss. I'm gonna use my huckle pliers for this last little bit because that's a little thin. A little easier to hold on with the hackle pliers. So a nice prominent red center on this. And I will tie that off right behind, a little bit behind the wing. I need a bit of a gap there. And I will trim the, slide my hair scissors down that, and trim it right off at the shank. Get the peacock curl around my thread a couple of times again. And I'll wrap probably two or three good wraps in behind the wing. And I'll come in front now and I will finish off the thorax almost to the eye of the hook. Bring it back, wrap around underneath the wing, and then I will get the peacock curl up out of the way and trim it out. A little bit there. The tag ends, that was used every last millimeter of the peacock. Now there's reason for wrapping on in the front and the back is it covers up the hook, but also it helps that wing stand up nice and straight. Now at this point I'll bring my thread up and I will go around the wing once and then down the far side. 
and let the thread hang there. Now I need a hackle. So I need to get a, a hackle out of my neck here. And picking the barbule length on this hackle, I want them more, a little more than the one and a half shank length because these parachute flies can stand a wider hackle. They, this is to represent in the surface film, it's to represent the legs that uh, stick out from the side of the fly when it's resting on top of the surface film. And I'm gonna strip this back, right back the, to the quill. So that I've got a, a, a piece of bare stem that's about a little less than a quarter inch long. And I'm not gonna do the trim the hackle bits. I want the stem to be bare here. A little piece of bare stem. I put the, that stem on the near side of the hook, right at the back of the, the wing. Go a couple of wraps. Then I will hold the stem up like that, vertical, parallel to the wing. And I will go around the wing and the stem of the hackle. And I'll do that five or six times, wrapping up the wing as I do this, wrap the stem in. Again, what happens with that is the, the stem of the hackle also helps stiffen up the wing. So just take your time. And you can see the threads going up the wing to hold that hackle stem there, right in with the base of the wing. And so I got a little post there, you can see the black, black thread that's going up the wing with the hackle stem trapped in there. Hackle pliers again, catch the hackle with the tip, by the tip. And I'm gonna start wrapping horizontally around the wing with the hackle. So I come around once and then I want to pull down in front and over the bottom and down on the far side with the stem around the wing. And every time I do this, I want to wrap the previous wrap and the new wrap underneath the previous one. So you have to go up and over and down up and over and down. And you do that each time around. And what will happen is each wrap of hackle will be under the previous wrap. When I get several wraps down, I'll let the hackle go straight down on the far side of the hook, take my thread and go to the same thing, around, down, up and over and down and down and over and down, up and over and down, and then leave my head thread hang there. I'll pull my hackle out to the side so I don't tip my thread and slide my scissors in there and trim off the tip of the hackle. And this is the last trick you need for these parachute flies, is you firmly grab the thread bobbin and fly, take it out of the hook, and turn it so that the shank of the hook is vertical. And support the, the thread bobbin. Then you do is you take your whip finisher and you do the same thing. You go underneath the hackle, keeping the thread at this part of the thread parallel to the wing. And you whip finish around underneath the hackle at, right up against the shank of the hook. You know, and then pull it up from the bottom. And if you do that properly, you don't trap any hackle fibers with your whip finish. You always have that wrapping thread going to the back of the hook. And 
and then push and pull and come in here and under underneath on the ah, get my thread out of here come with the thread and trim it fairly close to the hook and don't snip it just cut it with the edge of the scissors and there's your parachute style fly so all that hackle is now horizontal on top of the hook shank and when it sits in the surface film those are the like the legs of the, the fly that are sitting on the surface film with it sticking out to the side and it doesn't have to be a very heavy hackle this fly is going to ride in right in the surface film so that's it for my pattern i will do the uh, remove spotlight there you go and we can go back to gallery view so i can see everybody so that's it there's your two i think the two most effective coachman style patterns is the trude style and the parachute style so if i'm tying a batch of those i'll do them i'll do both of those and stick them in the box there you go thank you dave very nice so Florin is up. He's going to tie us a streamer fly. I'm going to talk boobies. <laughs> Booby eyes. So here's the uh, here's the idea. I mean, you all, all guys know about uh, booby eyes and stuff like that, and it's typically you know used on dragonflies and a variety of you know reasonable sized um, trout flies in lakes and I thought well why not go a step up and do these things um, for you know bigger streamers so this is a size 2 odd hook that I normally use for pike fishing and this would be one of my favorite uh, color combinations for here you get a better idea for a pike streamer and I think if you size this up properly, you can you can tie them for your your favorite your favorite fish. I think it runs from from trout to salmon and everything else in between. Other than you know really big things where we talked earlier about putting a putting a whole chicken on the hook. So um, okay, let me readjust this here. Now the idea with the booby eyes came from the fact that after doing a bunch of um, of fly boxes with uh, that matte foam that I had bought a Canadian tire. I had a bunch of these little pieces of foam, you know, little cutoffs left over. And I talked to you about those fly boxes a while back. And so what I did is um, I went and I bought some brass tubing from the hobby shop. You might already have some tubing of, of some kind around the house. So I think the bigger one was around nine millimeters in um, I think the outside diameter. And what I did is I just put it in a hand drill and put a piece of um, not the finest, but not the coarsest sandpaper on a desk and held this at, at an angle to, to sharpen it up. And I I bought some smaller sizes, so this would be more appropriate for, let's say, dragonflies and things like that. And if you really want to tie smaller flies, I'm thinking damsels, for instance, you want even uh, finer tubing. I think this is around five or six millimeters um, in diameter. And then I just uh, cut myself a bunch of these uh, cylinders. So their, their length is the thickness of that matting. You can also, you know, cut pieces of foam to whatever desired size you want, and then you you cut your cylinders. The only disadvantage to the way I've been cutting them uh, is that these are the two uh, the two sides of the matting, and one of the sides has this sort of pattern thing on it that looks and feels just a little bit different 
from the other side, which is nice and uh, flat. Okay. But other than this, I don't think it matters an awful lot other than that the flies don't look very pretty when, when looked at from one side or the other. And then I took my hooks and I made some experiments with uh, trying to float them. I don't have a fly tester, but I have glasses and I put water in the glass and then I put the hook and one pair of booby eyes and it would go boonk, just like an anvil. Um, putting two two eyes uh, seemed to to do the trick. Um, the other thing I experimented with was, and this makes tying a little bit more difficult, is put a pair of eyes at the back and one at the front. And I tried to tie the eyes on first and then the, the fly, and that seems to be a little bit more difficult. And so I settled on possibly the simplest way of doing this thing as tying the streamer as usual, leave a significant amount of space at the front and then tie the eyes on. And that's how I've, I've tied a few, um, a few patterns. And then, you, you know, you can vary the, the body materials, the colors, the, this is some of that um, polar chenille that we were talking about earlier. So this is a, a simple kind of a white, white and just a bit of uh, blue flash in it. Okay, so I'm going to quickly tie a fly for you to, to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm going to do it with all the usual trimmings. And I think for, for what I'm using this for, for pike, they can be picky, but I think a lot of the extra fancy footwork that I go through the trouble with for the, for the body is probably overkill, but it sure is fun to do. So what I'm gonna do is, I always like to have a touch of red in my uh, in my pike streamers, so I'm going to take a little bit of calf tail and cut a little bit of that. So this is very tough stuff. It's super hard. I've never had trouble. You know, the the, the fly is shredded to pieces. Uh, but the calf tail hair is still there. So just attach it to the hook. And then you can, you know, at this point, you kind of have to decide what you want for the body. And um, in this particular case, I'm going to do a, a ribbed body. I'm also experimenting a little bit with this uh, flat wire. So it's uh, something I just I just bought recently, and I'm I'm experimenting with. This is a silver. Uh, what is it? Uh, oops, the label is on the other side here. So it's a flat wire. So it's not perfectly round. It's a little bit. Um, it's a little bit flat. It's a little bit flattened. So I thought this might make a good uh, might make a good ribbing material. Okay, and then for the body, I'm just going to use a piece of Christmas tinsel decoration, which I'm just gonna tie in here, flat on the hook. I'm trying to keep the underbody as flat as possible. And go all the way to the end. Of course, I have a little bits of hair sticking here that's not that's not the way it's supposed to be. Okay, and then I'm just going to put a little knot here and get the thread out of the way. All right, so this is a little bit delicate. That's why I do the uh, ribbing on top. Ooh, 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 ooh. So I'm just 
Sorry, I didn't see that side very well. And now just try to cover it with the tinsel as best as I can. Just wrap the body. This just gives a little bit of color and flash there. You can use whatever color you like. Well, okay. Never mind. I think I have to go back a little bit here because in my weak spot where I have the. Okay, now I hope this is going to work. So, nah. All right. Back to the drawing board. This stands up wrapping once, twice, not so good. So let me try again. Have another piece handy. There you go. Tied a bunch of these flies yesterday and today, and naturally, this is the first one that gives me real trouble. Okay. So the trick with with this tinsel is be a little more gentle with the first few wraps when you secure it so you don't end up with unpleasant surprises. This thing can actually break on you. As you can see, it didn't take an awful lot to break it off. So then get the thread again out of the way and then counter wrap the rib. So this is my wire. Okay. Secure this with three turns or so. And now we're ready for the rest of it. So the body itself is just a little bit of bucktail. And here you can vary color combinations, you know, whatever, whatever you prefer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to cut from here a bit of both the white and the darker stuff on top. So I have basically a uh, two-tone bit of bucktail ready to go from the start. Okay, clean it up a little bit. So this is this is what it looks like. There we go. So I already trimmed the tips here. So all I have to do is just secure this to the hook properly. And here I have to go back a little bit because I need to leave myself a good chunk of space for the eyes. So as you can see, I've left at least three eye lengths to put the booby eyes at the end. I probably can use even a little bit more space. 
All right, now I put in the flash and the feathers. So for the flash, I have a little bit of um, this holographic blue. That's kind of kind of a flashable, but very very fine strands. And I just fold it in half. I have three strands on either side. That's usually enough. You only want a little bit of just a little bit of flash. You don't want to overpower this thing with too much flash. And then I also don't like my flies to be too long, so I'm going to trim these to length. Now for the feathers, what I've done is I plucked from this inexpensive uh, saddle patch. And the easy way to to find some some hackles and match them in size is to actually look in the back and pluck off the back rather than than from the front. So I've already plucked a pair that I felt were of matching size. There they are. They're not perfectly straight, but that doesn't seem to be a, a huge problem. Now, what I strive to do on these things is to actually get the length of the hackles matched as well as possible. So these are, you know, they feel to be the, about the right length. And then I size it up so that in total I get about two, two and a half shank lengths not much longer than that. And then I look at my tie-in point. So this is what the what I want the finish fly to look like. And so I measure to the tie-in point and cut the excess. Once I've done that, I don't have to do anything other than put them in basically both Make sure that they're both tied in in the same the same spot. Now, to make them stay as well put as possible in the place I tie them in, I take my debarbing pliers and I just smash the stem a little bit flat here at the tie-in point. Don't go too far, just where you tie the the feather in, and do it for both feathers. I don't know if this is visible on camera or not. Probably is, yeah. So you can see this is flattened out now. So then what I do is I take my feather and I place it along the hook shank in the position I want it to be in. Hold it all nice and tight. Oops. And then wrap over the remaining piece of stem all the way to the eye of the hook and then go back and get ready to do the second feather now you want to do this as symmetric with the other one as possible so, you know if you can turn your vice around to see better then that's that's not a bad idea so here I just line up the stem with the eye of the hook so that it's going to be tied in exactly the same way as the other feather. Okay, so now I have a streamer. Basically you can, you know, finish the head here with a few more wraps of thread to add a hot spot perhaps um, you can um, another thing that I like to do sometimes on the streamers is take a little bit of uh, cross cut uh, rabbit strip and do like a little collar and that pulsates very beautifully in the water um, and then that would be a, a fly that's that's ready to take out uh, take out fishing okay what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take 
my front eyes and place them on the hook. And in order to see better what I'm doing, I will turn the top of the hook facing myself. So I can see, I can look at the fly from the top down. And this is just like any other eyes, you have to do a figure eight on them to secure to the hook. You can, you don't have to super, you know, go super crazy on this. You don't want to cut the foam. You don't want to break the thread. You just want to secure this in place as well as you can at this stage. Putting in a second pair of eyes behind this one. So this, this gives you eyes, but it won't lift the fly too much. It's too heavy. And then what I do for the, for the back is I just take one of the uh, pink ones. I have some blue and yellow I haven't cut yet. So I'm thinking of also trying, uh, trying a few different colors. So now this is going to be the final step. And this is a little bit more difficult because the two pieces of foam are going to be tight against each other. So you have to make sure that you can actually slide the thread in between and not, not catch anything else. So just go like this, wiggle it a little bit to let the two pieces of foam part ways a little, and then finish the figure eighting, go on the other side. And through here, and then go again a little bit on the other side. So each time you go between the two pairs of eyes, just make sure that it doesn't get, get caught in the foam because then you kind of catch another piece of foam and the eyes don't look round anymore. And then when you're reasonably satisfied, just go all the way to the front, take your whip finisher, And I'm going to put some Sally Hansen on this, but I'm in the habit of doing two wood finishes no matter what, because my experience has been that if you have toothy fish, um, even if you put some stuff on, on your knot, uh, it can be cut eventually. And what happens then is if you have a second knot, then you can you can keep fishing that fly until it's really done. Okay, and just for decorative purposes, and I don't know how much it really matters that these things have a pupil here. I'm just going to use a just a permanent marker, nothing, nothing fancy here. Right and draw a little eye pupil in black. Try and make it a little bit bigger and maybe a little bit. This is where having both sides identical would, would make this final coloring a lot easier. And as I promised, Sally Hansen's is the last step. So this is kind of an exposed, an exposed area of the fly. So I want, want a little bit of safety here. And I'm sorry, I did run over time a little bit. And a little bit more. Okay, that should do it. Just lock the vise in position this way so that any excess glue here is going to just kind of flow into the eyes. And in between, this is going to give you extra security for attaching the eyes. You can spin it a little bit to give it um, give it a chance to settle in a uniform way. And then I'm just going to leave it like this. And that's that. 
-hmm. It's more a set of ideas than a pattern per se. Yeah. I, I think that'll work really well for, and, you know, fish it on a sinking line with a, about a six foot leader. It'll float a little bit and get the line right down on the weeds without getting hung up on the weeds all the time. Yeah, you know, and I, I was thinking exactly that, and I think it works. But then I thought, wait a minute, for pike, you also put a piece of wire. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, no, there is no room for a third. But you can do, you know, cut a big piece of foam and do a, and do a foam fly. But then it's not booby eyes anymore. So that's yeah. what I had set out to do initially, and that's what I ended up doing. So... So that's, that's that. And I've got myself, I don't know, about half a dozen of these things. And my, my experience has been that the, the hackles, the, the two hackles, you can, you can do four hackles um, as well. Um, it also works with only two. And they're surprisingly, um, they're surprisingly resilient, even for pike. So the key ingredients here, you know, you can add or subtract from the other stuff, but I think the hackles and the flash are the, uh, the really yeah. important ones. Good stuff. Yes. Thank you. So that's it, Jens. Uh, well, that was an informative morning. It was yeah. had quite a, a cross section of stuff and. Uh, We'll uh, we'll do it in another couple of weeks. I'll stop the recording here. Hmm.